The M4 Mac Mini is a thing. If you're even remotely into tech, you probably should just get that instead. So why am I starting this video all about the M2 Mac Mini talking about its successor? Well, that's because 95% of you watching this video should probably get the M2 Mac Mini. I'd love to tell you why, so let's talk tech. <laughs> I'm Arnell with Arnelly Tech, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Mac Mini that I have personally been using as my daily driver for at least a year now. Before that, I was using the 2012 MacBook Pro, which I've talked about in this channel before, and the i5 2014 Mac Mini as well. Also, I think I did a video on it sometime last year. I'll have those linked down below in case you're curious. Now, as a tech YouTuber, you can imagine that I wanna have the latest and greatest hardware and want to be able to use the latest OS and really just wanna have a smooth, seamless experience without feeling like I'm missing out on anything. So that begs the obvious question, why didn't I get the M4 Mac Mini when it was announced? And well, really the answer is because the Mac Mini M2 still has so much life left in it, it's honestly not even funny. So the purpose of this video is I wanna give you my honest and personal experience with the M2 Mac Mini, especially as somebody that is one of the more power hungry users of a computer. So that way you can kind of get a feel for if this is the right Mac for you or if you should upgrade to the M4. Now, before I get too ahead of myself, let's take a quick look at the specs because if you're considering getting a M2 Mac Mini, you're going to want to know what actually comes with that. And speaking of getting an M2, if you are curious in purchasing one, I will have an affiliate link down below in the description and in the comments. So that way you can see the most up to date pricing on whichever M2 that you are particularly looking at. Now, my particular model is the M2, not the M2 Pro. And I also went with the base 8 gigabyte RAM, uh, but you can actually get that configured all the way up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. This comes in various sizes from 256 gigabytes all the way up to two terabytes. And that's not even to mention the expandable storage you can get by plugging in an SSD or even just a hard drive. This also includes two USB-A ports, two USB-C or Thunderbolt ports, one HDMI, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, one ethernet, and of course, the power supply. Everything is conveniently located right on the back of the Mac, uh, which is great because when you're looking at it head on from the front, it looks very sleek and minimal. And then you have your ease of access, just everything all in one place for you to be able to easily connect any kind of peripheral that you need. Speaking of the design, it's very low profile at less than one and a half inches high and less than eight inches wide and deep, meaning this will tuck into virtually any kind of desk setup since the footprint is very small. Also a side note, this has very much improved speakers for just listening to music or if you're watching a video or whatever, way better than what you were able to get on the Intel processor Macs from back in the day. Uh, not that the processor has anything to do with the speaker, but it is worth mentioning mentioning that at least with these Apple Silicon Macs, they just for some reason did a really good job of putting in nice speakers in this generation of Macs. With so much of our lives dependent on the internet, there is so much of our personal and sensitive information that could be vulnerable to people with bad intentions. That's where today's sponsor Aura comes in. Aura is a digital security platform that helps protect your personal information from hackers, identity theft, and data breaches. With features like dark web monitoring, credit protection, and up to $5 million dollars in identity theft insurance, Aura offers an all-in-one solution for your safety. Aura actively searches data brokers that pass your information around for those pesky spam calls, includes antivirus software to protect your devices, and even has fraud support if someone breaks through that line of defense and steals your identity. Signing up was incredibly easy and only took about five minutes to answer various security questions about what I want monitored and figuring out a plan to figure out how Aura can best monitor my security weak points. It's like having someone constantly watching your back and helping to catch things that you weren't even aware of. Check out our link down below to try it out at no charge so that you can take control of your online protection. Thanks again, Aura, for being today's sponsor. And now back to the video. So getting back to the M2, let's take a look at how the software performs and just the overall actual user experience. 
With the M2 still running the latest OS and will for years to come, I really have no fear of feeling like I'm gonna be missing out on any kind of big new key features. Currently, Mac OS Sequoia is out and I'm running that natively on the Mac with all of the latest features like Apple intelligence, iPhone mirroring, and more. Performance has been ridiculously smooth, especially with all of the tasks that I do. On the daily, I do all of the obvious givens, checking your email, iMessage, FaceTime, YouTube videos, just watching movies, really anything that anyone would normally use a computer for. But also as a content creator, I use this a lot for photo editing and video editing. Now, I'm particularly proud of how well this performs with video editing. I don't record in 4K, so my timelines aren't, you know, crazy in-depth 4K timelines. Uh, but with my 1080p timelines, this holds up all of that very well and I'm easily able to scrub through my entire timeline when I'm recording or editing and it just does everything very smoothly and natively. I will say that exporting can take a little bit longer than what I would like to see but honestly it's never stopped me from being able to do anything that I want to or editing any long video that I want to. It's honestly been very smooth and seamless. Every app and program opens up very snappy and quick. Animations are a breeze and the OS just feels very fluid and doesn't really feel like a heavy or bogged down system. Everything just feels nice and smooth. With the M2 chip, there's very rare instances that I ever feel like I wish I could get something done faster or something would load faster. And because of those instances being so few and far between, I never really feel like I'm lacking any kind of performance with just the standard M2. And honestly, the ease of being able to wake up my Mac and jump into whatever program that I want to within 10 seconds of waking it up from sleep mode is honestly great. Now, the M2 efficiency is a lot more noticeable on MacBooks because, well, they're portable devices that are running off of battery. So obviously you want to have the most optimized uh, performance and energy efficient performance happening on a battery operated device. But it is also surprisingly noticeable with it being a Mac that is constantly plugged into power, not so much for the power saving because well, it's constantly plugged into power, uh, but specifically with the heat management and the fan noise. With this being a Mac and practically being over-engineered as it is, I know that this will last for a very long time to come, especially considering I'm still using that MacBook from 2012 as a Mac on the go. That's exactly why I haven't upgraded to the M4, because this has flawlessly kept up with everything that I have thrown at it. And to be honest, it meets my needs of somebody that could honestly benefit from using the most high-end performing Mac that is out there, but this just still does it very well for a great value. Is the M4 chipset actually better? Absolutely, there is no denying that. The M4 is better than the M2, but do you need it? Well, that's for you to decide, but I will say that all of the Macs that are running the Apple Silicon, especially the Mac Minis, are honestly probably the best bargain that you can get for performance to price ratio. But hey, if you stuck around for this long in the video, I appreciate you watching and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss our next video. Now, you might wanna check out this video right here because YouTube thinks that you'll really like it. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.